Welcome back. Our next talk is theming Plone 6 Classic UI by a couple of Plone theming experts. Uh, Peter Holzer has been a Plone developer and integrator for many, many years now, and so has Stefan Antonelli. Uh, Stefan's passion is UI and UX design. He's been the author and maintainer of many Plone add-ons, especially related around user interface. And Peter Holzer has been working on many add-ons as well as core parts of Plone for, for, for eons, it seems. Um, so it is my great pleasure to have them presenting on Plone 6 Classic UI theming. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our talk about theming in Plone 6 Classic UI. Servus from Munich, or okay, at least Munich. Um, my name is Stefan Antonelli. I work for Operon with Plone since ages. And I'm very happy to introduce Peter. Hi, I'm Peter Holzer. I'm based in Zurich and work with Plone since 2004 uh, with my company, Editator of Web Lösungen. I'm part of the Plone Dynamics Alliance and involved uh, in various add-ons, uh, for example, collection filter, mosaic, and our very own uh, shop package, PDA Plone Shop. Before we show the new fancy stuff, let's talk about history. Uh, what is the story behind Plone 6 Classic UI? We had several discussions in the community regarding theming. There was the Plone talking in Berlin. There was a conference sprint. We had the Alpine City sprint. Um, and of course, we also had some rants about the current situation regarding theming in Plone 5. My personal opinion was Plone 6 should not work exactly the same like it was in Plone 5. Um, everybody tried to use Bootstrap somehow, mostly without success. So our first idea was to map variables from Barceloneta to Bootstrap variables. There is a lot of stuff defined in Plone where Bootstrap already comes up with styling or components. So the result was a lot of duplicated stuff but we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So what is a possible solution for that? What if we switch to a framework and change Plone to use it? What we have to do is to update all the markup in Plone in all its templates and just use Bootstrap in the future. We came up with a couple of blips. The first blip was uh, during the sprint at the Plone conference 2019 in lovely Ferrara. And the idea was to modernize the markup in Plone core templates. We had a couple ideas on that and um, major stuff is update all the templates in core. Okay, we know it's a lie. We never touch all templates, but everything or almost everything we see. Uh, one major task and a little bit tricky was to tackle the formlib C3C form, which is uh, responsible for all the editing stuff in Plone backend when you edit content types or add content or stuff like that. So everything should enable us to write templates and add-ons without writing tons of CSS lines. A few weeks later, there was a clip to modernize the default theme, Barceloneta. And also a couple of months later, we came up with a clip to modernize the JavaScript story which is on its way. It's in a branch at the moment, not yet merged, but it will uh, be part of Plone 6. Uh, Peter has some slides to cover this topic later on. Make things easier is the headline. And with things, I mean development, templates, all the responsive stuff, seeming, the seeming story at all should be possible a little bit easier. Creating a clean and beautiful theme for Plone should be possible without headache. Headache because creating a modern website or web application is a very complex task. Front end stuff is complex. And since there are thousands of devices, resolutions, things out there, it's uh, really uncomfortable to not tackle that with a frame, without a framework. It should be easy to reuse components that just work. And with component, we talk about cards, listings, stuff like navigation. User expects things to work in a certain way. 
because there are widely known UI patterns for features like buttons, like hover effects, like formulas. And with Bootstrap, now we have UI patterns that has been tested and evolved by thousands of projects and users. From a developer perspective, there should be one way to do things that is used by all components, core ecosystem add-ons and stuff. No need to write custom CSS or add-ons. And of course, you still want to be able to do your own stuff. As a developer, you don't want to design. You want to rely on a design system, which reduces complexity and uh, of creating responsive layouts. As long as you stay default, it's fully responsive, by the way. As a developer, you don't want to think about markup. You want to just use components for formulas, buttons, stuff. You want to use markup and apply it. And you don't want to write custom stuff for each uh, template or for each feature you add. Last but not least, you want good documentation. And we don't want to reinvent the wheel, so we say, um tested and maintained default components are part of bootstrap fully rely on that framework for iggy but for iggy bootstrap so what's new in plan we have the new default ui which is voto but the classic uh, ui will stay as an alternative for at least another five years so we updated the markup um, for based on Bootstrap 5. Uh, we also updated the Barcelona theme, uh, which got the more modernized look and feel. And uh, finally, we also modernized our JavaScript stack to make it easier again, or at least less painful. This is what it looks like. This is the new, uh, the Barcelona, as you know, the modernized look. Uh, based on Bootstrap 5. So what is Bootstrap 5? Um, it's still the most popular and widely known front-end framework. It's well-documented, tested and maintained, and there are tons of examples and snippets that you can work on. I have to say, after working with it, we missed out quite a lot of fun. Bootstrap itself uh, for the version 5 uh, also improved the overall look and feel and uh, completely overhauled the grid system. They updated and extended the color system and now added support for custom properties, also known as CSS variables. Bootstrap now has their own uh, SVG icon library and they don't uh, use jQuery anymore and switch to vanilla JavaScript. Then in this step, they finally dropped support for IE, but you can still add polyfills if you really have to support it. So basically, they got rid of legacy stuff as we do it with Plum 6. Our plan for Plum 6 Classic is try to stay up to date as much as possible with the latest bootstrap versions. Yeah, let's talk about what we get when we use Plum 6 Classic UI. Let's talk about the futures. First of all, we get Bootstrap markup. In Plum 6, all templates will use Bootstrap 5 markup. All major templates has been updated. This includes the editing forms, the templates for default content types, listings, the control panel, and a lot more. We try to stick as close as possible to Bootstrap which means some small or small changes or, or some details has been changed, like the, the pass bar. In some cases, there is different UI necessary. For example, the main navigation. We had to change the markup to cover a drop-down navigation with more than one level. We absolutely recommend this minimalistic approach also for add-ons. Reuse existing components, no JavaScript is required for something like show and hide because there is a collapse component in Bootstrap. In addition to that, we still have our patterns that are known and used in Plone, like the modal or stuff like that. Plone has tons of features. Please grab Plone 6 Alpha and test it, report bugs, 
tell us about missing or unstyled templates for that. Since we have bootstrap components, we know they work like a charm. Our documentation is now the bootstrap documentation. Everything you can see there in their documentation section, especially in the components, it works out of the box in Plone. Check it out. Components used in Plone Core are breadcrumbs, cards for portlets, or for example, the tabular listing. You literally can copy and paste stuff from the documentation and paste it in a document or paste it in a template, and it basically works. Sometimes you have to tackle HTML filtering a little bit. One example is the accordion. Uh, we literally copied that over. You have to disable HTML filtering and everything works like, yeah, you see it in the example. So what is the new Barcelona theme? It's an opinionated set of booster variables. You can uh, change every aspect of the theme with variables. You have overall properties like shadows, gradients, and rounded corners. Uh, we have generic variables for things like colors, sizes, fonts, and also variables for very detailed aspects like the inner padding of your buttons or fields. On top of that, we added a view of clone specific styles and components, for example, the navigation, content type views, or control panels, for example. And they all work based on the variables that we define. So this is the theme as we have it now. And we'll show you a quick, uh, quickly how those variables work. You can easily change colors, add shadows, round your corners. And uh, as mentioned, um, those uh, variables will change every aspect of your theme down to a field. And most certainly, uh, they work with the components that you copy in from Bootstrap. You can check out the Plum 6 Classic UI on the demo site already. And uh, I will tell, show you now how you uh, can create or theme your own Plum website. So the web theming is still there, but there's no uh, through the web compiling anymore. It is still possible to upload a zip theme. Um, if you did that before. Then in uh, 5.2, we reintroduced the kind of custom CSS, which allows you to add some extra styles within the control panel of your site. With Plum 6, and thanks to Bootstrap 5, we have also support for CSS variables that gives you uh, quite a range of possibilities to change the look of your clone site without changing the theme itself or the need to recompile uh, your styles. Uh, avail availability of those properties will evolve with progress of Bootstrap itself. So for theme development, we focus on file system-based development the base for files for Barcelona are now also published as uh, Plone Team Barcelona base on NPM. It includes all the variables and properties that define our well known uh, Barcelona theme. For you to make it easy, we also updated the templates in Bob Templates Plone and the template theme under Barcelona is based now on that NPM package for your theme creation. This means you have viewer files to look over, to just add your view of your files, and uh, therefore it's easier to update the theme in the future. So basically, so how you create an atom pack, you create a theme package with uh, Bob Template Plone. Uh, version 6 uh, is the version you need to have for Plum 6. So you add an add-on, create an add-on package, add your theme into your package, where you have three options. There's theme Barcelona to inherit from Barcelona. There's a theme base template to theme just with Bootstrap and without any Barcelona or Plum specific styles. 
or you have um, a very, very basic option, just a theme, which is just the basic files that register your, um, your theme and you can start in your own very own way. So basically you install the pen packages, the dependencies with uh, npm install. They are defined in the package JSON file. You add your, your own styles, run compile, and um, have your styles ready to show in your clone site. As before, the styles are added uh, within the manifest uh, CFG, um, but you know that. Uh, the other is still there. We made some improvements. Uh, it's now easier to do modifications within the content area. And we move the grid and column definitions to CSS. Now to JavaScript. Uh, there has happened a lot of stuff. Uh, so we no longer uh, use required JS. That, uh, so you no more have those uh, anonymous mismatch defined errors. We also updated jQuery, but maybe you won't need it that much anymore with ES6. Uh, as said before, we don't have a through a web build anymore. Uh, so you can use any build tool you want. Uh, Plone, for example, uses Vectback, and uh, the Plone compiled resources uh, script is replaced with that back. So to say uh, you register your optimized JavaScript files is a simple snippet as it was in Plum 4. Uh, Mockup was also updated. It uses the latest JavaScript syntax and features from ES6. We use import statements instead of require. Uh, we use async and wait for lazy loading of dependencies. This uh, reduces file size of the initially loaded bundle. And all the mocker modernizations were done uh, based on the mod modernization that happened within pattern slip. So mockup now really uses the same concept, concepts and it's basically the same. Uh, this makes it also easier to combine them. The resource registry was rewritten to fit all those uh, new features or less features. Again, through the web compiling is gone. The bundles are still there, but we don't have uh, resources since we don't uh, need them anymore. This allows you to use your favorite packaging method, which just register your optimized CSS and uh, JavaScript as before, but less parameters. This is what the simplified bundle uh, registry looks like. Um, maybe there will be some more uh, reductions, but we'll see about that. And this is the look of the new simplified resource registry. So just see it's your bundle with a few parameters, you add it and you save it. A little background on the resource registry. It's much, much simpler and less error prone. It's based on the web resource package that Robert Niederreiter uh, wrote. Uh, it solves dependency management and conditional delivery of resources. And um, one other thing is that you don't no longer have to create manual time steps. Um, now hashes are created, automatically created based on the client file contents and uh, used for the invalidation of those resources within the browsers. The hashes are created on startup of your instance or on every request to enable the development mode. So you'll find your bundle the same way as before in your profile, just less configuration. So one more thing, um, how to deal with icons. We made the decision to use bootstrap icons by default in Plone 6. Um, state of the art is to use inline icons to be able to style them. And we needed a way to override and customize them. So let's figure out how we archive this. 
As mentioned, Bootstrap has its own icon library. Current version is 1.6.0 and it grows. They're free, they're modern, they're available as SVG and also as icon font. Check out the, check out the icons under icons.getbootstrap.com. All icons are registered under their original names. In addition, we added context specific icons. It's basically an alias for the original name. It's registered to allow overrides in projects. We have icons for content types registered in icon expression of the content type XML. We have UI icons for stuff like copy, paste, save. We have for the toolbar icons and we have MIME type icons with a nice fallback feature. You can register an icon for an image, for an image slash JPEG, or if you do something like image slash foobar, it will use the fallback for the image icon, which is nice when you don't want to register hundreds of icons for every image type that is possible. Uh, the registration for Plone 6 Classic UI is done in static resources. Uh, there is, for example, an icons underscore bootstrap XML. Check out the package if you want to see the stuff in, in, the, in the code. It's basically a mapping for an icon to its corresponding resource URL. Uh, we show an example here for one registry record. We use the prefix icon or plone.icon. It's followed by its name, in this case, alarm. And alarm is the actual name from the bootstrap icon. Resource URL um, to the actual SVG icon is part of the registration. And this, Everything together, this brings us the, the icon resolver. That's nice, but how to finally get the icon in a page template, for example. In Plone 6 Classic UI, we have our all new icon resolver to look up icons. And technically, it's done as a view, and it's added to the main template, similar to Plone underscore view. Um, the icon resolver in this example is a tag method. Um, and it returns an SVG tag that is uh, inserted to the template. We have here a structure replace, which directly insert uh, the code that is uh, that comes back from the resolver. It takes an icon name as an argument. There is also an URL method to return a resource URL if you need that. For example, if you want to do an image tag or stuff like that. For it also handles binary files where this is used, and for binary files like a PNG, it returns an image tag instead of, of course, the binary code. Um, so these fallbacks are implemented, and there is also a generic fallback that shows a plone icon if the icon is not found. Inline icons or inline SVG icons because it's 2021, so we want to insert icons and we want to um, style them. We want to do stuff like it. That gives, gives us the option to style and animate uh, the, the stuff we have in the DOM. The icon resolver is also available in JavaScript. This example is from the query string pattern. We have the import, and then we have the, the use of the resolve icon method. Have a look at the code to see this uh, in action or how to do this in your own JavaScript parts. Um, how to deal with icons in content. Um, you literally can copy and paste an SVG into your HTML. This is not very convenient, but it works at the moment. And a plugin for the tiny MCE editor is planned. It's not that complicated to select and insert an icon that is uh, registered somewhere. Um, there is some discussion in progress. If you have ideas or if you want to give feedback, please uh, ping us after the talk or pop up during the sprint. Some ideas are also to create a setup profile that install an icon font, which is available for Bootstrap or which you may be, which is already known from something like Font Awesome. Um, it's well known. It uses an icon tag and uh, add the icon as font in that case. This, it, at the moment, it's an idea. It's not part of the core. For or to show how this could work or to show how you can override icons or use your own icon font. Um, we have a package that's called Collective Font Awesome. It is work in progress, so um, please um, give us a few days to, to finish that. It includes an example of how to add custom icons in Clone. You have to provide somehow the icon SVG files. You have to register uh, the icons in XML. 
And there is a script in the package that generates the, all the XML for the icons based on the files in the folder. So this is a convenient stuff um, to not write that all by hand. The manual selection for UI or content types is of course your part if you want to replace the original one. You can also make a mixture of uh, different icon fonts if you prefer that. The last step is a setup profile to add an icon font, but this is also part uh, of the discussion at the moment. And finally, we want to show you a quick overview of what else uh, we changed with Implone. So typography and overlook uh, of Bastionet was modernized. We also uh, reworked the content type, tem content type templates with the news item with the lead image on top. Uh, we also improved the display of the metadata fields. Events also got an update. And we streamlined, uh, streamlined the views for images and file views. Uh, we updated uh, almost every listing, so the, the few that need some tweaks. This is the summary view. This is what the tabular view looks like. And uh, this is what your typical edit form uh, will look from now on. We, the control panel also got an overhaul. Uh, we changed the navigation, uh, we use bigger icons. Um, this is, for example, the portal actions control panel, all done with the uh, bootstrap components. This is what the users control panel looks like. And we also make sure that our contents look good on mobile devices. So how do your team um, to get you started? We already updated the trainings. We also already did the trainings on Saturday. So there's now a part for theming based on Barceloneta. There's a part for theming from scratch if you want to base it only on uh, Bootstrap or uh, theming with Yazo. Uh, if you want to implement a uh, the theme that you got somewhere else that's based on Bootstrap. Um, and the documentation uh, will be updated pretty soon. Based on that. I want to thank you and thank all the people in the community that made this step possible. Uh, as always, uh, it's a big effort and we couldn't have done it without each of you. Yeah, thank you as well from my side. Um, I have to say, talk to us if you have ideas, feedback, or whatever you want to talk to. Um, we have here some contact information. Join us for the sprint um, if you want to get uh, dirty hands. Um, every help is welcome. Also, documentation is, is welcome if you just want to write, write down some stuff, how it works. Um, Talk to us on the Plone Discord channel. We have a classic UI channel where we uh, meet you regularly and work on that stuff. So feel free to ping us, feel free to join us. And thank you and have a nice conference. Thanks, Stefan. Thanks, Peter. That was a great overview of Plone Classic theming. And uh, it's amazing to me how many changes have gone into it. And uh, these two leaders of this particular work have been so amazing. Um, it's an amazing amount of work and uh, I'm looking forward to spending time reviewing what's going on there. And as you know, uh, Plone Classic and the theme being updated for Plone Classic is so important to Plone as we have such a large installed base of big sites that um, it will take time to get them moving over to Volto. So, it's great that we have this option to continue using Plone Classic.